మై సుప్రీం నమస్కారంస్ టు ఆనరబుల్ పద్మనాభరావు గారు అండ్ హీఈస్ లవ్ డాటర్ శైలజ గారు అండ్ ఆల్ ద అదర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ అండ్ యాస్పిరెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ వేరియస్ కాంపిటేటివ్ అండ్ బిగ్ పోస్ ఐ ఆమ్ కంఫర్టబుల్ బోత్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ అండ్ హిందీ అండ్ తెలుగు బట్ ఐ కంటిన్యూ టుడే విన్ హిందీ ఇన్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ వేర్ ఎవర్ యూ రిక్వైర్ టు హ్యావ్ ఎనీ ఎక్స్ప్లెనేషన్ ఏదర్ ఇన్ ఎనీ లాంగ్వేజ్ విచ్ ఐ రెఫర్ యూ కెన్ వెరీ వెల్ ఆస్క్ మీ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఆస్క్ టు స్పీక్ టు యూ అబౌట్ ఇండియన్ జ్యుడిషియల్ సిస్టమ్ Indian judicial system actually based on common law system. Why we say what is common law? Common law means a president based judiciary. Like there is a highest court and it gives decisions. And the same have to be followed by all the subordinate judges. or other competent courts working within the judiciary. That is common law system. Based on recorded judicial precedents, which we have inherited from the British colonial legacy. At present in India, the court system of, is comprising at the highest level the supreme court of india and thereafter the high courts and then below to supreme court and high court subordinate courts at district municipal and village levels before i venture to speak to you about the indian judiciary and the indian judicial system and how they work we need to have knowledge of why and how we had a fight and thereafter got independence in the year 1947 august 15th during midnight which you know well our country was ruled by united kingdom that is british government so we had prayer to british entering into our india both jurisdiction wise and also in all other aspects a bigger country which includes bangladesh pakistan afghanistan and some other countries various countries are part of india each part or some parts are ruled by kings zamindars and some at some places religion ruled like that the system was not fully organized and codified within the country also here and there different laws used to be there finally we fought for freedom and one and finally we got independence after that we have got drafted in the constitution assembly the constitution of india the constitution of india after it is promulgated and came into force we have adopted indian judicial system to maintain the law and order and implement one law in all the entire india except in jammu and kashmir where we had another <coughs> constitution though it is part of <coughs> our country <coughs> i don't go or dwell into various other aspects but we have adopted constitution of india with a preamble in which we have enshrined some 
big objects to achieve by our indian judicial system or indian government and whatever it is <coughs> just i refer to the preamble in order to understand about the goals of us we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist democratic secular republic these are all the goals how we achieve we want to achieve these goals through social revolution what do you, what do you mean by social revolution what is the method what are the systems that we are adopted we want to achieve these goals by adopting democracy you know very well in democracy in india election system is that whoever gets majority of the votes polled they are declared as elected and they will become parliamentarians or mlas M- mlcs or uh, any 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 other elections like municipality and other things so after they came into power after they come into power they make laws how to implement these laws who are the persons who are deciding <coughs> what is the law and whether that law is correct or not and whether that law is within the purview of the constitution or it's acting against the wishes or a constitution abridging the rights and all that we have fundamental rights right from article 5 to 52 or so and directive principles of state policy all this you may be knowing or in some other class we will definitely discuss at length about various organs that are made or part of our constitution and why they are made and what we want to do it so dem- democracy is the one of the organ through which we want to achieve our goals in the democratic setup which is part of social revolution law is very important so unless and un- until a settled law is there we can't claim that we are part of democracy and rightly we are proceeding to achieve our goals rather the goals enshrined in the constitution of india so i don't go into the what is government how it is made and all that today we will deal with only indian judicial system because only 45 minutes are there for us today to understand that under various topics what is the hierarchy of courts what are civil courts what are criminal courts judicial authority of the supreme court and article 141 article 144 binding value of precedents public interest litigation these are the various topics which we need to understand in order to understand the indian judicial legal system so i already told you that the court system that is judicial system of india comprises the supreme court of india the high courts and subordinate courts at district municipal and village levels when you talk about high hierarchy of courts we need to understand which is the highest court in india the indian judiciary is divided into several levels for what in order to decentralize and address matters at the grassroots levels so let us understand what is the basic structure of the indian judicial system i am not talking about basic structure of the constitution i am now referring about the hierarchy of courts which is part of indian judiciary and what is the basic structure of indian judiciary 
we must understand first about the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the apex court of the country and it was constituted on 28th January 1950. 28th January 1950. <coughs> it is the highest court of appeals and enjoys both original suits and appeals of high court judgments. The Supreme Court at present is comprised of the Chief Justice and 32 or 36 other judges. Article 124 to 147 of the Constitution of India laid down the authority of the Supreme Court. These articles deal with about how many judges of Supreme Court shall be there and who is the chief of Supreme Court, how he has to be selected or appointed, what is the role of the government and powers of President of India and all that. You have to read Articles 124 to 127 of the Constitution of India in order to understand the authority and supremacy of the Supreme Court. Generally, original suits or original cases or criminal cases means the cases in which a particular court has got jurisdiction to try and decide directly by itself by taking the cases on file. This is called original jurisdiction. What is appellate jurisdiction? Appellate jurisdiction means that case is already decided by the one of the courts subordinate to Supreme Court. And then a right of appeal is provided against the judgment of that court. Then from that judgment of that court, it will go to the higher court and finally to Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court is having not only the extraordinary powers being the highest court, both of appeals and also the original suits in order to have, uh, and have the power to decide the appeals and original suits and also appeals of the high court judgments. So with this, I say and refer only Article 141 of the Constitution of India, which says the decision and judgment of the Supreme Court is binding on all the courts in India and other authorities also, not only on the courts subordinate to Supreme Court, all other authorities working in India under the uh, government of India or state legislature or state or central governments. So all authorities also, they come into the, uh, within the jurisdiction of Supreme Court and Supreme Court is having all powers to make decisions in respect of any disputes that has arisen within the territory of India or outside the territory of India, but concerned to the uh, law of our country. So Supreme Court is having the original and appellate jurisdiction. It has been constituted on 28th January 1950. With this, we'll go to high courts. So while we are talking about entire India, we say that Supreme Court is the highest court, apex court, and it is having power in respect of all the original and original suits and cases and also the appellate cases that uh, are decided within the territory of India or sometimes in cases relating to the disputes that has arisen in other countries but connected to our country. That is for the entire India. Then what about the state? In state, in almost in all states, we are having high courts. The high courts are the highest judicial body at the state level. Article 214 lays down the authority of high courts. 
there are now about 26 or 28 high courts in india which you can refer your textbook for this because recently telangana high court is established and we have got common high court for uh, punjab and haryana and uh, separate high court for uh, jammu and kashmir state that state is divided into one union territory and two states it seems so you have to refer and find out how, about how many courts are there in india generally maybe 27 or so high courts in india then again what is the jurisdiction of the high court what are the powers of the high courts high courts exercise civil or criminal jurisdiction only if the subordinate courts in the state are not competent to try the matters so high courts are also having original jurisdiction and appellate jurisdiction but con- connected to the subjects or matters relating to the state for which that high court is established or formed so high courts may even take up appeals from lower courts again the high court judges are appointed by the president of india upon the consul consultation with the chief justice of india and the chief justice of high court and the governor of the state so you have to refer the article 214 about understanding the authority of the high courts and also how the judges are appointed for high court and all that the constitution of india then district courts so high court is meant for the entire a particular high court generally for each high court one uh, for each state one high court is there but in some places a common high court is also there which i referred earlier at punjab and haryana then at the district level district is the unit within the state there are several districts in a state and for each district some system is adapted or established within the uh, permissible limits of the constitution and district courts are established by the state governments of india for every district or group of districts based on the case load and population density like uh, now in telangana after uh, uh, that state is formed several district courts are established considering about the need because of the case load being more and all that and district courts are under the direct administration of high courts are bound by the high court judgments again in district courts there are two types of courts civil courts and criminal courts district courts are presided over by the district judges additional district judges and in some cases basing on the case load additional or uh, assistant district judges also may be appointed what do you mean by assistant district judges we will uh, talk about it at a later level so let us understand at district co- level there are civil and criminal courts and district courts are presided over by the district judges and at in one district or some two or three districts also because of the case load and their populate density separate courts at district level may be established of the cadre of district judge and appeals against the district court judgments lie directly to the high court so high courts are subordinate uh, district courts are subordinate to high courts directly both for administration and also for implementation of the judgments of the supreme court and high court this is at the district level and district uh, district court uh, district uh, uh, sometimes two districts are three districts also then after district level we have got subordinate courts 
at uh, in a, in a district of a state there are lok adalats and village courts and all these are subordinate courts at the village levels which provide a system for alternative disputes resolution in villages let us not talk about village courts and lok adalats today we will discuss about them later but after district courts below to the district courts there are subordinate courts which are uh, within the control of the high court of high court of a state but general administration is being controlled for day to day affairs by the district courts so what are those courts we call them as subordinate courts at first level subject judges again the subject judges uh, in sub courts we call it as sub courts as at sub courts uh, also two types of courts for civil side we call them as sub court criminal side we call them as assistant session judge so district court is called as sessions court and uh, sub court is called as assistant sessions court that is below to the district court civil side sub courts they function as sub courts presided by a subject same person with competence with same powers when he is working in criminal side he is called as assistant session judge so so sub courts two types of courts for civil side cases addictions subordinate courts law we call them as sub courts for criminal side we call them as assistant session judges then below to that we have district municipal courts at taluk level in fact in district municipal courts also two categories one is civil side we call as district municipal as district magistrate uh, uh, district munsip we call him as district munsip or we call them now as junior civil judge in case of uh, subordinate courts we call them as senior civil judge in case of district court we call them as district judge i am referring about the names of the uh, cadre of the judges at high court we call the judges as high court judges at supreme court we call them as supreme court judges so at lower level that is at uh, municipal level or taluk level the judges are called for civil side junior civil judges or district municipals in uh, criminal side we call them as magistrates or judicial first class magistrate or jfcm like that the powers and also the jurisdiction of each court is clearly defined under particular law again in a criminal side there are two types of uh, judges at uh, uh, taluk level judicial magistrate first class judicial magistrate second class uh, their powers are different uh and they deal with only criminal cases but depending upon the punishment for a offense and also depending upon the area over which the particular uh, criminal side magistrates are having powers they will be uh, called as judicial magistrate of first class judicial magistrate of second class second class magistrate is subordinate to ఫేసింగ్ సివిల్ కేసెస్ అండ్ 
he is the designation is called as district munsif or junior civil judge when the same person is functioning in criminal side depending upon the powers and jurisdiction of him he will be referred as magistrate first class or magistrate second class regarding lok adalat and village courts in some areas village courts are established so far as lok adalat system is concerned these are subordinate courts at the village level which provide a system for alternate to dispute resolution in villages totally they are different in lok adalat what they do is they call the parties and discuss with them and convince them and make them to have a amicable solution and then they give an award not judgment so lok adalat system village courts are quite different to the regular courts system rather indian judicial legal system in case of indian legal judicial system what what uh, the judges are expected or the courts are expected is to follow a procedure of conducting trial of a case and then take evidence and then hear the arguments and finally give a judgment in case of lok adalats and village courts no evidence is recorded it is making the people to understand what is exactly the law and in order to avoid the unnecessary disputes and to save the time to have amicable settlement this is what lok adalats and village courts they do then we are having tribunals in the constitution itself there is a provision for the government with a power to set up special tribunals for the administration of specific matters such as tax cases land cases consumer cases etc so while we are discussing about indian legal judicial system we have to understand about the tribunals also all these tribunals originally they work under the purview and control of the high courts generally in respect of specific matters these tribunals are constituted with specific powers the matters such as tax cases land cases consumer cases etc are being decided by tribunals sometimes a law is also made to create tribunals and decide the matters maybe this is all made to have speedy disposal of the cases or a particular subject is required to be, to be disposed of by a person competent to decide such matters do not have competency as a, a trained qualified judges trained qualified judges they are appointed based on the uh, result of uh, exams conducted and interviews followed by the exams and they are trained and uh, they are having uh, law degrees and all that in case of tribunals a person having knowledge of particular uh, law relating to the subjects such as tax cases tax land consumer and the cases related to such subjects if that man is having proficiency he is also considered uh, uh, appointed as a member of the tribunal likewise competency rather method of selection of the judges for tribunals is different to the courts so let us now understand what do you mean by appellate court jurisdiction appellate jurisdiction refers to the authority of a court to rehear review a case decided by a lower court the first court where the case is decided after taking tri- after conducting trial and recording of evidence and hearing the uh, arguments is called a court of ori- 
court having original jurisdiction original jurisdiction means that the court which recorded the evidence while conducting trial and actually seen the witnesses and refer the original documents and then after giving the opportunity as provided under law regarding hearing of the case giving a, a if a decision is given by that court that is called original court or original jurisdiction is being exercised but whereas appellate jurisdiction is concerned it refers to the authority of the court what it does it hears it rehears or review a case already decided by a competent lower court that is appellate jurisdiction so i already told you that in india appellate jurisdiction is vested generally speaking in both the supreme court and high courts in some cases even to district court or subordinate court that is sessions court assistant sessions court so all courts are having original jurisdictions in respect to a certain subjects or certain areas both uh, appellate jurisdiction also except the first courts that is district municipal courts in civil side and in criminal side judicial first class magistrate courts they don't have appellate powers or appellate jurisdiction so above the first courts there are courts such as senior civil judges court or assistant session judge court at lower level taluk level or sub region level with appellate and original jurisdiction powers and then above to those courts district courts are there and above the district courts district courts as i referred uh, earlier are having original and appellate jurisdictions and above district courts high courts are there above high courts supreme court is there so let us now understand what do you mean by civil case and what is what is mean by civil courts we were referring uh, right from the beginning that there are different cases and courts which are called as civil courts civil case on one side criminal courts and criminal case on the other side what civil courts do is civil courts provide remedies for the civil wrongs committed by individuals against other individuals or and entities or governments so if a civil wrong is committed by any person the aggrieved party can approach the civil court for getting a remedy for the wrong committed against him the wrong may be committed by individual or any entity or part of government or any system likewise any person whose civil rights are affected that any person includes the government authorities also then they can approach the civil courts to provide remedies for the civil wrongs committed by the any other individuals or entities generally civil matters range from property disputes to breaches of contract to diverse cases civil courts follow the principle of roman principle you be just you be remedium what is the meaning of it for every wrong the law provides remedy law contemplates that if any person commits a wrong if it is civil wrong then there must be a remedy for it so that's why in order to understand what is civil case we must understand section 9 of the civil procedure code excuse me sir shall we join again this meeting will end sir okay madam yeah. again i will join yes thank you